In the last video, we saw the bar chart as a way to uh, visualize data on a nominal scale, but also on a metric scale. And in this video, I want to show you um, a very mighty tool to get an idea about the inner distribution of a vari variable um, and its values within the variable. So this tool is the box plot and I have already loaded the data Münzingen that we are using, but to explain the box plot a bit better, I will start with a more simple uh, example. So the command for making a box plot in R is um, unsurprisingly box plot, and I will make box plot of the numbers from one to nine. And here you can see the result, the resulting box plot. So you can see different elements here. Um, at first, let's talk about this big black line here. This represents the median of the data. Um, we'll talk about the median a bit more later on in the session about descriptive statistics, but to give you a short uh, idea, if we sort our values that we have in a data row according to their values, actually, uh, and we select the middle one of these values, then we have the median. And if, so let's say I would have 1, 2, 10, then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I can select the 5 here as the value that's exactly in the middle of this row. When I have only 1 to 9, there is no real middle value in the sorted data row. So I make the mean value of these two here. So the, yeah, the mean. Um, and this is then my median. And what the advantages are, and also probably the drawbacks in relation to the um, mean, the standard mean, I will tell you later. But for the box plot, this black line here represents kind of the central value of the distribution. Next element that we have here is the box, and this box represents um, the middle 50%, the middle half of the values. Again, we operate here on uh, the, ordered, um, the ordered values, and in the case that we have, let's say, 1, 2, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 values. The middle ones are those four here in the sorted, uh, sorted array. So we have four outside and four in the center. And this box represents then these four center, the beginning and the end of these four center values. And Next thing we have are these whiskers here, and they represent uh, the most extreme values if they are not one and a half times bigger than the range of the box here. So when you see this whisker, you know, and nothing else here, you know that this is the last, the outermost value, the most extreme values. Um, but if we, for example, make a test variable in which I put in several ones, then one to nine, and I box plot this test. Yeah, you can see this uh, lower part, this low whisker is gone because we have several ones here starting with, and the most extreme value here is the nine. If we change that a bit and add an extraordinary high value to it and box plot that again, you can see now we have this little guy here um, that is an outlier. So it's much farther away from the standard values. Um, it's still displayed here and it's 
doesn't is not included in this whisker here because it's so extreme you can see that here as a dot representing the outlier the very extreme value and with these small tools with these few tools you have already a quite good overview of your data for example here we have kind of a um, let's say um, normal now well even distribution of the data there is not so much structure going on they, this is actually symmetrical so what is below the mean value is more or less has the same structure than what is above the mean value uh, the median value if you look at this here we can see on the one hand that we have very many values here on the lower part few fewer values here on the upper part and one extreme value you have already a good idea how the data is structured uh, from a graphical perspective so this is quite helpful to get an idea about what your values how your values looking like so let's start with the real values of the Münzingen uh, Fibulae and I make a box plot here about the length and we can see now that we have again a box plot which is kind of symmetrical the median is a bit too lower so we have more lower values probably than higher values and we have two extreme values two outliers up here that are fibulous with uh, extraordinary length the good thing about the box plot is um, beside its very nice uh, visualization of the data structure that it understands the formula uh, the equation notation in R so we could write something like give me the length in relation to the um, fibula scheme and our data should be Münzingen and with that we visualize the different boxes in accordance to their fibula scheme what we can see here now is that we have here our two outliers and um, how the data distribution is among the other fibula schemes so both uh, latin A and latin B are quite similar so we have here fewer cases the box is also smaller but here we have now again an orderly box because we have two values there and we can also make a median there and these are representing the most extreme values there but um, we can now also clearly see that these um, very large fibulas belong to fibula, uh, to latin c she um, <coughs> we could also um, turn this plot around a bit for example with horizontal horizontal should equal to two and with that we get this kind of plot here it's the same but now just turned around and if I also want to have the labels turned around I can give LAS equals to two and then you can see now the labels are turned 90 degree and um, we can enhance this plot also with the usual things like giving it a main uh, title so fibula length in relation to fibula scheme and make it make the color a fancy gray and add a uh, label for the x-axis slab should equal to let's say fibula length and now we have here our main title our uh, x-axis label and the boxes are in gray um, there's actually not so much more to explain here we could because this uh, the box plot in understands the uh, formula notation we can also add another variable here let's say 
coils and no, it's not coils. We have a look to the data. It is coils with a capital C. And now you can see that we have um, two variables here divided. You can't see that very well. Let's turn that around again. Horizontal equal to true. It's still not very nice. LAS should be equal to two. So now you can see it. Um, here you have the, the call numbers and the fibula schemes and the resulting boxes here. And this probably doesn't make so much sense in this kind of data set, but you might find a data set where it makes sense to divide these categories even further. So this flexibility is given you by this formula notation. And the last thing I would like to show you is that you can also run a statistical test within the box plot. That's also quite nice because you can graphically show the result of a statistical test, what a statistical test is, how it works. Uh, we will talk about later on when we come to statistical tests as such, but just give you this here. You could add the notch parameter and set that to true. And when we do that, you can see now that these, um, um, the display has changed. Before we had straight lines. Let's me move that. Give you. So this is the standard way of displaying. If I add the notch command, you can see now we have these band lines, these this, uh, uh, skewed lines here. And also the boxes look a bit strange. The thing is, whenever these uh, um, skewed, this uh, diagonal lines um, overlap, there is no statistical significant difference between the distributions, while when they do not overlap, there is a statistical significant difference between the distributions. Meaning that, I mean, this is quite low number of cases here with two, but you could say the fibula scheme C has statistical different, a significant different length than the other two because these uh, diagonal lines, this diagonal part here is not overlapping, the notches are not overlapping to the others. So in that way you can display the result of a statistical test within the plot itself, which makes that quite nice. Okay. Um, that was probably much too short for one of the uh, very handy tools when it comes to visualize the distribution of the data um, of, of, a, of one variable and compare different distributions with each other. Boxplot gives you a very nice overview about uh, how your data is structured and if you understood the basic principle of how Boxplot is created, you can work very well with these results. And next time we will see the standard. We will talk about a bit more about the standard plot as such, so a scatter plot uh, relating two variables to each other. So we come from um, univariate statistics to bivariate statistics.